an old model steam engine which was made circa 1896. Part 1. I like a challenge and this engine falls into that category. Not only is it very old, it is not well made at all. My mission is to rebuild it and make it work, but try and retain the original patina relative to the age of it. Where did it come from and why am I doing this? The more I think about it, I really don't know. It belongs to my friend James Evans, and if you want to see what James does, have a look at T's Cottage Guy Productions on YouTube. The address is on screen at the moment. This engine was given to James Evans, I don't know why, it was just given to him, and I said to him, do you want me to fix it? Just like I did with the other engine that I called the Diabolical. And this falls into the category of Diabolical Plus. Look at the state of the crankshaft. Most of the parts appear to be of soft-soldered construction, something I would never personally do, because soft solder tends to degrade with age, whereas silver solder remains the same. I can't just put this engine back together and hope for the best. It needs some major surgery, but it needs to be discreet. The whole point of the exercise with this engine is to fix it, make it work, but not alter its appearance very much. It does need a flywheel because that was soft soldered onto the crankshaft and it's missing. Here are some details about the engine's history. I'm not going to read them out. All you have to do is pause the video and you can read the description. The last owner of the engine, who gave it to my friend James Evans, is 80 years of age. Back in 1896 you couldn't just call Blackgates and order parts. You had to make them yourself. All of these nuts and bolts are handmade in a really odd way, out of square bar, which has been turned and threaded, and they have pyramid-shaped ends filed into them. One of the problems I had was they are not all the same size, nearly, but not quite. The crankshaft is soft-soldered together, and that's given way at the crank pin. As you can see, it's not exactly straight. The cylinder and steam chest seem to be okay. The exhaust pipe has some evidence of having something been soldered to it in the past. But that part is gone forever. The part that secures the eccentric rod to the valve rod is quite unusual, and the easiest way to remove it is with a small pair of pliers. Disassembly is quite tricky, and also in the mix are some odd bolts that shouldn't be there. I need to change these. The problem is, some of my spanners fit them, some of them don't. What I'm going to do when I put this engine back together is make a special tool using a piece of thin round tube and beat it into submission so that it becomes square at the end. Then I'll be able to use it as a nut driver and it should simplify the reassembly. The only time I will use the spanner will be for the final tightening of each of the fixings. This is the part of the crankshaft that once upon a time had a flywheel soldered to it which is long gone. James Evans says he's going to send me a Chinese-made flywheel. It will be horrendous, but I may be able to modify it to fit in with this and then repatinate it. What's interesting about these bearing blocks is they have inserts which can be remade if necessary. Although I'm not in any rush to manufacture new parts for this, the whole charm of working on this engine is to make the parts just as they were in 1896, using various compounds and even a bit of paint to make all the parts I'm going to make for it look old. Some of the workmanship leaves a bit to be desired, as you can see here, the hole in the plumber block is nowhere near where it should be really. One end of both of the crosshead guides are held together using a 4BA bolt. Not only does this look completely out of character with the engine, one of the mounting blocks has parted company with the cylinder. It was, after all, only soft-soldered in place. This is one of the problems I'm going to fix in the next episode. I have a simple rule on this, even though it's not very well made. I cannot bodge it. If I bodge it, it's going to compound the problem. Here I'm removing the other plumber block, complete with what's left of the crankshaft and the pulley. I'm not going to paint the base plate or anything like that, I'm just going to clean up what I have to work with, and I shouldn't need to remove these wood screws, because doing that would cause a problem, and I don't want to have to fit new ones. Time now, I think, to look at the cylinder. 
I really do hope that everything inside this cylinder and valve chest work, so I'll give it a try and see what happens. I've connected the air line and I'm admitting compressed air into the steam chest. And almost remarkably, the piston leaps in and out with quite a lot of force, so the piston fit is good. This is encouraging, I really didn't expect it to perform like this. Having said that, the existing eccentric sheave is no good at all, I need to modify this considerably, but discreetly. I detected a slight leak on the steam chest, so here I'm tightening up the bolts, and I was lucky enough to find a spanner that just about fitted both of them. I'm not going to take this first episode too far, you should get a good idea of what I have to play with. And I'm not saying that I can successfully fix this engine, but I am at least being optimistic as usual. The ravages of time have had an effect on the wooden block. It's slightly longer than 11 inches, and slightly shorter than 3.5 inches. I'm sure it probably started off being a block of wood that was 11 inches by 3.5 inches, but it has been affected possibly by the climate over the years. And that, my friends, is the end of the introduction. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.